my name is Eric Coax, and uh, where I call home is where this could take me, basically. So my goal and my passion in life is to be sustainable. Um, I got out of driving six years ago. Um, I pretty much got rid of the vehicles. I had to go through that withdrawal period because of my addiction. There really was an addiction. I had shakes. I saw my truck driving down the road and I knew I wouldn't see it again. I wouldn't have it. So I was pretty much uh, determined and I was, I had to do something because I haul a lot of materials. Uh, you know, just going to the grocery store could be like 70, 80 pounds worth of stuff. And a regular bike is fine with a trailer, but I just, I don't intake enough calories. I don't have the energy to, you know, just to do it all on my own all the time or getting to work back and forth and to commute. So the idea was um, solar, extend the range. Um, you don't have to charge it much at all. It will take you just about anywhere you need to go um, at a decent speed too within, within the legal speed limit of your bicycle. And sometimes you could push it a little bit in an emergency if you need to. <laughs> back in the day um, when we were brainstorming, we thought, let's take flight and see what happens. Because my engineering background with my grandpa and my dad were uh, avionics and aircraft. So flying was a big thing for us. And uh, we thought, let's build a solar human powered aircraft. Basically, this is a fuselage for an aircraft. Um, the panels would come off. The wing main would be right in this area, and the wing right out here. The batteries would be, you know, put up front there. Uh, a motor on each wing. It would be electric and solar panel all the way through. And then the tail section. This was just cut off here, so the tail would be out, you know, out and about wherever you need to take it for the tail section. So that was the idea, and it would be a float plane too. Um, it would be the only human-powered. Uh, solar glider that would uh, uh, take off and land on water. So when you're going to land on the water, the suspension is designed to tuck up, up into the wheel wells. And also on taking off on land, the, uh, we'd use a smaller, smaller wheel and setup, but it'll also get you going a lot faster on the ground for takeoff. So the takeoff roll would be a lot quicker. No, this is a prototype of this fuselage. Uh -huh to see how it does with aerodynamics. Um, the range is so incredible on it at 260 miles, we thought, you know, if it's this slick going down the highway with aerodynamics, it'll do fine in the, in the sky. Um, I have uh, seven and a half feet, so I'm not crunched at all for space. Uh, 30 inches on the width, so I could turn around okay. Um, this has a tent structure that fits over this area here when I need it so it's like a pop-up camper and it's all enclosed to keep the mosquitoes out um, the seat removes all that is taken out uh, the handlebars pop out real easy and they store away to the side with the cables and the crank pops out and I just unroll the chain off real quick and the chain just drops down there and this usually gets strapped up in the very back yeah, so it's out of the way. And then my foam plug fits in the, kind of the opening because I had to lower the seat down to get those, to get that center of gravity just right. So I'm really close to the ground. Anyway, I just, uh, I roll out all my bedding and, uh, and that's it. Oh, yeah. So one of the biggest reasons, I guess, um, is my belief in sustainability. I believe we can we can live and work and just volunteer. Uh, or if we don't have to work to pay for a vehicle like with the debt, you have insurance, taxes, and licensing. I know a lot of people are this is controversial and they love their cars, but if if a person was able to save that ten thousand dollars a year, they can almost live off of that. And so I'm practicing that just to see if it works. And so uh, then I can give my time to industry that uh, small cottage industries is what I really believe in. Um, and they're, they're, they're struggling because there's not enough labor, there's not enough helpers to keep it going. So my, my philosophy is to help each one.
from here, Grand Junction uh, can go out to uh, Utah. There's some great farms out there like the Castle Valley Farms. I can go to bed at night and go, this is all I have here. And if something breaks, I can go and get some used parts off a bike and, and put it together and fix it. Yeah. So I'm going to hang out in, uh, in Grand, uh, Grand Junction for a while and start drawing up my next project. I got one more to go. Well, the next one's going to be a, a Wells Fargo stagecoach about this size. And uh, think about those as they're, they're four-wheeled, they're heavy-duty. They've been around for hundreds of years, and uh, they pull right behind a bike really easy. Yeah, and they look good, too, and they're durable. That's the big thing. Yeah. Does it have it powered as well? It won't have any motor to the coach itself. Okay. Yeah, it'll just be, I'll have to put two motors on the bike. Okay. <laughs> My son is a solar nut, so ever since he was wee little, solar panel this, solar panel that. Yeah, so he became a solar, uh, kind of an engineer, electrical engineer. And so everything we have has to have a solar panel on it, or lots of solar panels. Yeah, all our bikes, all our trailers, everything has uh, got a solar panel on it. <laughs> These are um, sun power cells, and apparently now they're really hard to find because they're uh, aluminum backed. They don't have the plastic like that one does. So what you're doing essentially is they're like big heat sinks. They just, uh, they draw the heat right off the panel. Oh, I see. Yeah, so usually on a glass panel, you'll feel a lot of heat. But this with the wind blowing and when you're driving down the road, well, I should say riding down the road Ooh. like bicycle. Um, they get cooled off, so your efficiency goes way up. Cool. So, what? How much wattage do you have? This is two two hundred and seventy, ninety times three, two seventy, and then one hundred watts the back of the trailer. Hundred watts on the trailer. And yeah. What's your battery capacity? Now? Battery capacity on the trailer is fifteen times uh, thirty-two. So I'm looking at uh, four hundred watts or so on the back, and then I got about eight hundred watts capacity uh, back here. The, the lights are all uh, DC, LED, so they don't draw too much. You don't see that, um, you don't see it on the meter anyway when you turn them on. The, uh, it's AC motor, so it's a three-phase uh, AC motor. Huh. It's got a brain box, so everything is computerized nowadays. Um, the brain box tells the motor how to fire and when to fire and all that, so those magnets are firing off uh, milliseconds at a time. And uh, so it's not controlled by brushes anymore, it's just a less moving parts and no brushes, I, I like that. The brain boxes, I'll burn those up once in a while if I don't run the cooling system on it, you know, it's just a fan unit. Uh, like climbing a hill or something like that, I gotta turn the fan unit. And it's all located in the back. So this is the electronics bay compartment, just like on an aircraft or something, you'll have it um, in a compartment like that where you can get some air to it. And there's my wiring mess. You can see the little cooling fan right there. Yeah. And we have a, a swamp cooler in the works. It's wow. a evaporative cooler and it just fits back behind here inside and you just put your little tank in there and it's got a pump and that was been working out really well. Yeah. And that draws air. Good. It does. It draws a little air in through there and it's at night it's pretty cool. Um, generating that's that's uh, that was really important because Back here, this this motor turns into a generator in a split second. So when you're going up a hill and you're going back down, you really need to make sure that the battery has room for more power. Because when I find myself all the time, I'm not thinking or something. I, I don't know why, I'm at the top of this hill, my solar panels are on, I'm going, yeah, I got full battery. but. I can't get down the hill really. Um, 
happened a few times where outside of Castle Valley coming back down to 128, um, I started approaching down the hill and I lost the back brake right away. I didn't have any regen braking because the battery was full. And then I started to smoke the disc brakes on the front. And uh, there's no way there's no way to stop. I just had to ride it through. Uh, but I had a spray bottle with me. <laughs> and it, I just reached around, grabbed that spray bottle. I was able to move those uh, flaps over. And those flaps, yeah, I got a, a hole right there, access hole. I can reach in there and adjust the brakes on the on the on the road, so I can tune them just right. So this hole here, it's a good thing I had it. Wow, look at that! You could and you could see the suspension too, so you can see all the components and see how it's working. And so I've just sprained the brakes, and they're steaming like crazy, and they're holding. And I got down the whole mountainside that way. Yeah. That was the only way to do it. That's super fast. Yeah. Just because I was so stupid by the time I get to the hill. So now I gotta make sure that my battery's uh, just got some, some more room to put uh, power into. Uh, and uh, hopefully, I mean, this, this could, uh, uh, more people could get into it and, and have a little personal vehicles. Uh, these could be kits uh, that school kids can actually put together with their glue clamps and stuff like that um, and get themselves on the road at, at a really young age and explore all the all this countryside yes it's a just a it's a in-floor heat yeah and set a thermostat to like a digital thermostat and so at night it does get cold uh, in here because there is no insulation at all it just there's there never will be insulation in something this small and lightweight so you just have the battery capacity to handle the heating needs that you have which doesn't take much at all I, I haven't noticed the batteries going down at all during the winter too much. And of course, summer, if you're near a stream or a lake, it just takes water and run the evaporative cooler at night. That is so true. So, do you travel in the winter and the summer? Winter, yeah, because the I don't have to worry about ice so much sliding and falling over like I will on a bicycle. Yeah. So this is really good in the winter. I, uh, I close myself up and it's warm, really toasty.